Now the battery itself, it's readily available on Amazon. I tend to pick them up from Castar or Wasabi Power for about 20 bucks. The D30, the EOS D30, beautiful plastic forward slash metallic outer with that lovely rubber grip. It feels so substantial. The battery, much like the modern Canon cameras, slots in nice and easily. And then locked perfectly on the side. Then we look at the CF cards. This one is tiny. It's a 512, I believe, megabyte card. I tend to go for the 512 for to two gigs on these older 2000s cameras. Otherwise, any bigger, it will not support it. So 512 to one gig is kind of the sweet spot. And that'll give you a couple of couple of hundred to a thousand images because they're low, low megapixel. This is my 50 mil EF macro lens that I use on my 10D, 20D, 30D. Remember that mount is EF. This is a beautiful lens. A lot of the images I show you were shot with this lens. Obviously I've popped them through Lightroom so they look nice and crisp. Remember this is a 3.1 to 3.25 megapixel CMOS sensor, one of the earliest ones. The menu system, nice and easy, but basic, you guys. It's got a roller wheel, which I love. Easy to flick through those modes. Quality, large, fine, easy peasy. And then ISO speed from 100 up to 1600, so it gets pretty noisy, but I love that grainy effect. I always keep the beep off and then keep the white balance on auto, that's just me. I use this kind of like an aperture priority point and shoot that gives me a real fine grain image, but also allows me to chuck it through Lightroom and get some great old school retro shots. Now I'm not too bothered about the continuous shooting, I'm not too bothered about the file format, but it'll shoot three frames a second nice and easily. That LCD screen on the back, yeah, it's not the best, but it does the job. I love the LCD panel on the top. It shows me everything I need to know. Exposure compensation, what f-stop I'm in, how many shots are left. Very familiar to the older EOS SLRs. Here we see we have the familiar wheel so I can cycle through my aperture. And then that wonderful dial that allows me to pick what mode I want to be in. AV is obviously my favorite aperture priority, but if you're learning the triangle of exposure, then go fully manual before you head out to that expensive film photography. On the side then we have video out and digital. Those cables are readily accessible on Amazon as well. And then a flash sync port for that beautiful portrait photography. Hot shoe on the top, you guys. And then on the bottom, nothing crazy, just that tripod mount as well. This particular model, Cost me about $15, I think, off of goodwillfinds.com. And it's in immaculate condition. I think it has like less than 5,000 shots on it, but overall, a beautiful camera. So as promised, I did go out and purchase and source a Canon D30. Now, why would I go and do such a crazy thing like buy a massively low megapixel turn of the 2000s digital SLR. Quite simply, because I can. These DSLRs, these original 2000s DSLRs, really pave the way for photographers today. If you Google or if you YouTube videos on the D30, you will find old school, original professional photographers singing and dancing about these older digital SLRs. Now for me, Again, I'm a huge Nikon shooter. So this, my Nikon DHS, is an absolutely wonderful beast. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful sports camera. Now I purchased this specifically to shoot sports. Now I purchased my DHS to shoot sports, to shoot action. Now, I understood when I purchased that camera that it had a two point something megapixel sensor. APS-C for sure, but very low megapixel. 
but the images that come out of that sensor, the wonderful vibes I get when I shoot that old school camera just warms the cockles and makes me super happy. This, the Canon D30, was released in early 2000. The millennium, the millennium bug, that crazy time when we all thought that the world was going to implode on itself. So we had massive parties and had a good time. Me personally, I was 18 years old. I think I just vomited and fell asleep early. But this particular original Canon concept was the first Canon ground up DSLR. Prior to this, Canon had partnered with Kodak. And they created wonderful cameras with CCD sensors. However, those cameras carried Kodak labels and Canon labels. This, the D30, 100% Canon. The old school Canon shooters, the original EOS film photographers will love this camera. Did love the transition to this DSLR. Now, what's important about this, as per the video, is it takes CF cards which means back then the pros could smash out their day's work, get back to the hotel, upload their images to their clients and get out to the bar and have a good time. These cameras created beautiful images and all with a staggeringly small megapixel of 3.2. Now it's an APS-C sensor and it's a CMOS sensor. Why is that important? It's important because these days everybody chases CCD. My favorite sensors are CCDs. Now, the good thing about CMOS back then is they were cheaper. So there was an abundance of these cameras being made and they could charge less for them. Retail for the Canon D30 was around about $3,000, which was about $2,000 cheaper than the Nikon D1. This camera was also smaller than the Nikon D1, more compact easier to travel with. Some of those OG travel photographers took these all around the world and they are bulletproof. Look at the build quality of this thing. It feels like the Canon 5D Mark Brick, Mark Chunky, Mark Gunner beat someone to death with it if they try stealing it from you. Please don't use violence, use your words. The images that you get out of these old school lower megapixel sensors are wonderful for me. I like using the OG lower megapixel sensors because they feel filmic. And I know that sounds dumb. Everybody says filmic these days. It's a buzzword. But in the end of the day, for people like me that started off shooting film, I like the nostalgia of filmic. As well, this camera, this D30, I picked up from Goodwill for 18 bucks. I it might have been 15 bucks, but overall with postage, it was less than $25. It is a massively effective camera. When I say effective, I mean, I managed to get beautiful images. I have a good time shooting it. There is an abundance of lenses and it's inexpensive and you can still get the batteries off of Castar. If you want to experience a DSLR, a camera with interchangeable lenses, that you can get beautiful bokeh, great landscape shots, depth of field, dynamic range, which is terrible, but beautiful color renditions, then these cameras are really worth having a look at. The Canon D30, the first iteration of Canon DSLRs that was made specifically by Canon. $20, $3,000 back then, interchangeable lenses, LCD screen on the back, Everything that you could ever wish for for a DSLR, for a, for, a, for a photographer who's new to the game, who wants to learn the triangle of exposure, fully manual modes available. For the photographer who's getting back in the game and wants to feel that nostalgia, the D30. This camera produces images which I love. Would I buy one in 2024? Absolutely yes. Go on to goodwillfinds.com, have a look, go on to eBay, Offer that person that's selling it on eBay 20 bucks and get you one of these cameras. Get a simple nifty 50, zoom with your feet, get these images, drop them into Lightroom, have a look. Do not denoise them. The grain, the colors, the vibes. This camera is slow to get to work. It buffers and takes forever. And all these things give it that nostalgic vibe. If I use an R6, clang, 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 it's like a sniper rifle. This baby, you have to be much more precise 
about your composition. Yeah, it's got those beautiful focus points. Yeah, the ISO goes up to 1600 and it's pretty noisy. Yeah, I can get three frames a second, but at the end of the day, it's all about the vibes and the feel and the process. And this reminds me of when I started shooting back in the early 2000s, when I started documenting my life on film, on APS, and then I switched to digital. I could not afford this camera back then. This is why I purchased this. I'm happy to review it. And I'm happy to tell you that if you're looking for nostalgia, if you're looking for a filmic vibe, if you're looking to not break, if you're looking to not break the bank, interchangeable lenses, beautiful big beast, then look no further. The Canon D30 is and should be on your radar. And then look at the 10D, 20D, 30D, 40D, 50D. Have a look at those other cameras. But really, all you need if you want an old school vibe and you've already got those EF lenses, those EF mounts, it's not going to take EFS. It's just going to take EF. Then this is something to consider. Get you one of the older, get you one of the last iterations of the EOS film cameras, and you can interchange the lenses through from this to that. That means you can shoot film and OG digital. You can perfect your you can perfect your photography with this beautiful digital camera, and then switch to film so you don't break the bank when you're developing and shooting that portrait, that Cinestill, those beautiful film stocks. Start with Kent Morf start with Kent Mir 400, $5 a roll, and work your way up from that. The Canon D30 in 2024. Yes, I would recommend it. It's a beautiful camera. Don't expect too much. There's no video. It takes CF cards, lower gig CF cards, one gig, two gig, lower. And just use those old school lenses. Enjoy it. Enjoy those images, that artwork that you created. And I promise you, you're gonna keep coming back for more. Thanks for dropping in. This is the Canon D30. I'll see you guys on the next one.